Welcome to Everyday Linux User. This year I have reviewed 21 different distros and in this video I am going to rank the distros in reverse order from worst to best for the Everyday Linux User. If you are wondering why your distro doesn't appear, well it means I haven't specifically reviewed it this year and therefore can't make a judgement. So number 21 is Elementary OS. Elementary is the distro that still flatters to deceive. On the surface it looks wonderful and provides a Mac S desktop experience but underneath there are too many quirks and some odd software choices. Ultimately, it feels like one person is trying to do too much and I just don't trust it not to break. Number 20, Anduin OS. Anduin OS is the new kid on the block and provides a Windows 11 look and feel to the Linux desktop and it does it quite well. It is number 20 purely because it is quite bloated and personally, I don't particularly like the Windows 11 look and feel. With a bit of tweaking, this could become a major distro in a few years' time. 19. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed The videos that I get the most flack on are the OpenSUSE videos. People can't understand why I find OpenSUSE Tumbleweed so troublesome. And the thing is that OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is okay, but it just isn't for a beginner or for the average computer user. The OpenSUSE users will now jump to the comments sections, but hang around because there are two more OpenSUSE variants in this list. Number 18, Fedora 43. Now Fedora can be hit or miss. Sometimes it is great and works perfectly well, but Fedora 43 when I tried it was a mess and I wasn't the only one to find this out. There were a few very odd bugs and the system crashes including one that stopped the distro booting altogether. 17, Q4 OS Trinity. Q4 OS Trinity is the lightweight desktop version of Q4 OS with the Trinity desktop. Whilst it is easy to install and it is lightweight, their desktop is looking tired and the Windows XP feel with the My Computer icons etc makes it a pain to navigate. And I found myself replacing all that stuff with the plain Dolphin icon and there were some tools that didn't work properly um, such as Caden Live. 16. Chrome OS Flex Odd choice this because it is basically Chrome OS for desktop PCs. If you want an easy to use system that incorporates lots of Google tools with the ability to install your own software, then this will work quite well for you. It is number 16 in the list, but that doesn't make it a bad option. 15, Cache OS. Now I really like Cache OS and it is growing on me more and more. It is a streamlined version of Arch with great optimizations. It is number 15 in the list, mainly because new users to Linux and the average computer user might find it a bit manual in places with lots of terminal usage required. 14. Endeavor OS Sticking with the Arch theme, here is Endeavor. It is basically Arch, but easier to install with a good set of tools. It does for Arch the same as Ubuntu does for Debian. It is easy to install and works very well. Slightly higher than Kashi, as for me it was a bit more stable, but I can understand if some people prefer Kashi to Endeavor. 13. OpenSUSE Leap OpenSUSE Leap is the version of OpenSUSE I would recommend for most users. It is a fixed release version of OpenSUSE and it is the version the OpenSUSE developers actually recommend for common everyday use. It is number 13 in the list but not because it is particularly bad but I have had a better experience with the distros higher up in the list. There's one more OpenSUSE distro in this list to come. Number 12 Manjaro Manjaro is based on Arch, but doesn't play by the rules that Arch fans seem to love. Having said that, it is a solid distro, easy to use, easy to install, and comes with some great tools. It's number 12 in the list, but still highly recommended as an option. Number 11, Chaos. I tried Chaos in October, along with KDE Neon and Kubuntu, and they all provide a great experience. So why is Chaos so low down the list? Really, just because there are other distros I recommend more. Chaos is easy to install and it's easy to use but it doesn't have deep repositories and that is by design and the developers openly admit that it isn't for everyone it is still a good solid distro though into the top 10 OpenSUSE Kalpa OpenSUSE Kalpa is the atomic version of OpenSUSE which essentially means it is easy to install and easy to use and it is very hard to break the trade-off is customizability if you just want to get on with your work and use your computer, then for the average computer user, this is great. Number 9. Fedora Knoit Fedora Knoit is the KDE Atomic version of Fedora, and like OpenSUSE Kelper, it is easy to install and use, and it's hard to break, with the trade-off being customizability. 
I am a big fan of these atomic distros and can see why for a lot of people they would be the solution. Number eight, Ubuntu. Now, I used Ubuntu this year on a budget mini PC, and whilst it's not built for budget mini PCs, it still stood up quite well, and Ubuntu is still a solid choice for a lot of users. Personally, I don't particularly like the GNOME desktop, but you can't really knock Ubuntu for its ease of installation and ease of use, and it does have a lot of bells and whistles. Number seven, Nabara. Somehow, Nabara is based on Fedora, but doesn't seem to have any of the issues that Fedora has. Nabara does for Fedora what Linux Mint does for Ubuntu. It makes Fedora easy to install, although the Fedora installer is now greatly improved, and it provides extra tooling on top, and it's also optimised for gaming as well. Number 6. Lubuntu. Lubuntu is great for older hardware, and even newer hardware if you don't want all the flashy animations holding back your day. It has all the stability of Ubuntu with a nice lightweight desktop. Lubuntu is great, I just love it. Number 5. Q4OS KDE Now I've just finished a month on Q4OS and I would say the KDE version is great. It takes a solid Debian base and adds some good theming and tools to the KDE desktop to provide an easy to install and easy to use distro that is highly customizable. Thoroughly recommend this for new computer users to Linux and for the average everyday user. Number 4. Kubuntu it was hard deciding which order to put these KDE distros, but Kubuntu comes above Q4OS because it is Ubuntu with the KDE desktop and it's the best Ubuntu experience as far as I'm concerned. It is easy to install, it is easy to use, and it has all the Ubuntu tooling. If you don't like snaps, then it's probably not for you, but for the average user, this is going to work brilliantly. Number three, Linux Mint. Linux Mint is and always will be a solid choice for the average computer user. It has always been easy to install and configure and it just works. It makes installing software easy, there is minimal need to no need to enter the terminal and it doesn't steal all your resources. Number two, Zorin OS. Tricky choice putting this ahead of Mint, Kubuntu, Q4 OS and Ubuntu because they are all excellent distros, but Zorin is now a highly polished machine. It probably runs a bit on the heavy side compared to the others, but you can turn that down the animations to make it perform better. It is easy to install, has nice theming, provides great apps out of the box, and it works brilliantly. And number one, KDE Neon. My number one might surprise some people, but I really like KDE nowadays, and I think the best implementation of KDE is done by the KDE Neon distro. Built on a solid Ubuntu base, KDE Neon adds in all the latest KDE tools, so you have an up-to-date KDE distro that is easy to install and use and it is solid and stable, yet it's up to date as well. And that is the list for 2025. And that is the end of the list. Leave your comments in the comments section, which one do you prefer? And that is it for 2025. I will see you in 2026 and the first month on will be on Pop OS. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.